Let's go ahead and get started. Thank you guys all for joining us. Um, to introduce myself, I'm Adrienne Graves. I work for the iSchool's Alumni Engagement Office, and I am so excited to in introduce our host today, um, Danny Goldberg, class of 2016 from the iSchool. Danny's had a lot of success in his professional career as an entrepreneur, creating and selling numerous businesses. He built a seven-figure manufacturing agency that helped companies create and scale consumer products. And his agency was the manufacturer behind the wildly successful Gravity Blankets campaign, which today is one of the largest Kickstarters in history, grossing over $4 million in just 30 days. But Danny's here today to talk all things podcast. As host of his own podcast, Bits of Gold, Danny's going to share everything that you need to know about starting your own podcast from the tech best practices, building content, marketing, and more. And there's going to be lots of time to ask questions as well. Um, so without further ado, let me introduce you all to Danny Goldberg. Hey guys, thanks so much for uh, joining for joining today. Um, so I guess we can we can kick things off. I'm really excited to have everyone here um, and to share a little bit about what I've learned uh, in, the, in my journey and launching my own podcast over the last uh, launched my podcast a little bit less than a year ago. Um, and really excited just to share all the knowledge that I have. I'm just curious, uh, maybe like by a show of hands for people that are on video. Um, how many of you, does anyone have a podcast already? Okay. Some people that haven't, and I'm assuming the rest of you are interested in maybe launching a podcast. Awesome. Um, all right, so we'll jump in. Um, I prepared a little deck here. I don't know how long it will uh, take to like work through, but um, I really took everything that I wish I had known from the beginning, um, put it in this, and um, at the end we could go into Q and A, uh, and you know hopefully that will help answer any questions. But um, anyways, so let's let's jump in. So today we're going to cover developing your show idea. Uh, publishing your first episode, marketing, monetization, analytics, uh, the tools that I use to be successful. Um, there are so many tools, so much software today as it relates to podcasting, and then we'll open it up for Q and A. Um, so just a little bit about me before we jump in, um, a little bit about my background. I built and scaled several companies uh, beyond, beyond some figures, started my first business at 14, selling boxing gloves, I ran that company from 2009 till 2015, uh, subsequently went on to sell it, and since I've been involved with numerous startups, I love entrepreneurship, live, breathe it. Um, you know, I love solving problems. I love starting businesses. And, you know, as much as I love business, I really believe that work is just one area of our life and that there's many areas in life that I believe are critical to building a life that you love. And I'll get to that in a second, but um, I really used to be like total workaholic. Uh, I would pass on adventures, experiences with friends, pass on going to my cousin's wedding uh, that I'm so close with to attend a business competition. And, you know, although I'm still obsessed with entrepreneurship, um, I'm more obsessed with building a life that I love. And that really became um, clear to me through a series of unfortunate events. At age 20, I lost my dad to cancer. At age 25, uh, really just as I, as I was getting my two feet back back underneath me, I uh, lost my mom to cancer in a matter of weeks. And through these life experiences, I lost a lot, but um, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't admit that I also gained a lot. And through this experience, I learned that each day is a gift, not a guarantee. And I learned the powerful teacher that you know we can't control how much time we have on earth and um, you know, the only thing we can control is how and where we spend our time. And that's why I decided to start a podcast to inspire people to get out there and build their dream life, to know that, you know, they too, you too can, can, will likely face obstacles. You're going to face hardship, but I really believe that it's our duty to build your dream life no matter what. So, you know, I, I, that's, that's the premise of what inspired me to start, um, my podcast. It was out of personal passion and my personal mission in inspiring people to get out there and build their dream life. So why you should start a podcast. It's never been easier than right now to start a podcast. As I mentioned, there's so much tools, software, technology that make it 
so seamless, so easy today. Um, people are looking for content there, um, especially like since COVID there, uh, I feel like everyone in like my neighbor, everyone, in, everyone has started a podcast in some capacity. Um, it is great for marketing. If you have a business or you're trying to build your personal brand, um, having a podcast will only help you um, in terms of creating uh, the image that you want, connecting with people, expanding your network. So it's an absolutely, it's an absolute amazing marketing tool. Um, and if you have a message, a story, a mission, uh, or something that you're deeply passionate about, like me, uh, podcasting is a perfect tool to get out there and share it with the world. So um, this one might sound very obvious, but uh, you know, I figured I'd share just the very simple definition of podcast. Podcasting is a radio show you can listen to at any time over the internet. Uh, you know, podcasting really blew up. It's been around forever, but it's really blown up since 2004 uh, with the explosion of Serial. I'm sure, uh, you know, a lot of you are familiar with Serial, have listened to it, etc. cetera. Um, but that's really how podcasting got its start. Today, larger companies are investing to buying up shows. So right now there has never been more, like there are so many companies, individuals that are starting podcasts, especially since COVID. In terms of where people listen, so this has totally shifted um, since pre-COVID. Um, you know, now majority of people are listening at home while they're doing work. Post-COVID, uh, sorry, pre-COVID, tons of people were listening to podcasts on their commute. Um, but now a lot more people are listening to podcasts at home. Um, pretty obvious for obvious reasons. So some popular podcast categories that, um, you know, I just wanted to pull some of the chart topping podcast genres, um, you know, are comedy, uh, educational news, sports, um, gaming. Um, you know, there are, uh, there's probably a podcast in just about every genre today. Um, but this, I just thought this was an interesting slide to show uh, what the break sort of looks like in terms of the popular podcast today. Um, so in terms of uh, just getting back to it a little bit more, um, I thought it would be interesting to just talk about, you know, for individuals that are trying to start a podcast, um, and I, I get into this a little bit later as well. Um, it's especially an interesting platform, probably one of the most interesting things. Um, you know, my podcast has nothing to do with my businesses, uh, but probably the most interesting thing that I've learned since starting the podcast is, is it is an amazing tool for networking. Um, there are so many people who I've had on uh, that in any other world where I didn't have the podcast, if I asked them for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour of their time um, to pick their brain or to hear more about their story, et cetera, they'd probably say, um, you know, go no, go kick rocks. Who are you to me? But, um, you know, now I've created this platform and what I bring to the table is, uh, you know, a growing audience, people that want to hear that person's story. And now that person is more likely to give me, you know, their time and I'm able to grow my network as a result and really help share this person's story. So it's really interesting to see the power that, uh, podcasting has had for me in terms of it being a networking tool, building my own personal brand, et cetera. I also know tons of companies and, um, you know, there are massive corporations like the New York Times, Forbes, Wall Street Journal that are uh, building their own, buying up other uh, media companies that are, have a focus on podcasts. It is an incredible marketing tool. I know a lot of small businesses that are now, um, you know, harnessing podcasting. Uh, someone who I'm friendly with, she has a business, she sells plants for your house. Um, and she decided to start a podcast that's hyper-focused around how to, how to plant at home. Um, and she's probably the number one podcast now for plants, for planting at home, all the how to, she brings on other experts and it's really helped explode, uh, her business. Um, and she really leverages it as a marketing tool. So how to develop your show idea. Um, so there's a few things that I have here in terms of questions that, uh, you know, you might want to, um, think about as you start to, plot out and figure out what your show will be about. So one of the, one of the big questions, what's your theme? Most podcasts do need a theme and you want to ask yourself, you know, what is your compelling theme? What do you want to speak about? Um, these were sort of the questions that I asked myself. Um, and I still continue to tinker with and, 
uh, go back to the drawing board to try to uh, hone in my theme. I think it's very important to have, um, you know, you can, you can obviously have a show that's pretty broad, um, but typically speaking, um, those shows are a lot harder to get traction. If your theme is very niche specific, um, you know, and your audience knows exactly what they're getting prior to the, the podcast, um, that's sort of what you want to create. Uh, the idea of having, um, you know, a very focused uh, theme and, and narrative that the, that the guest knows they're going to get um, each, each time they come in and listen. Some other things, um, you know, why you, why the show? As you think about um, you as the host, um, you know, these, these, these are uh, just questions that I ask myself in preparing my own show. So, you know, why you? Why, why are you going to be the best host of this show? What is your experience? What knowledge do you have that you can share with the world? Um, you know, why right now? Why are you starting this show right now? Why, why this show in particular? Is it related to a recent news event? Is it something that has impacted you personally? Um, for me, it was like my personal life experience that led me to starting the show. For others, um, you know, they're using it more as a marketing tool, as a way to reach customers, et cetera. What problem are you solving? So, um, you know, there are podcasts about everything today. Is your podcast going to be an entertainment show? Um, is it going to be about true crime? Are you a new show and you're giving people an unbiased take on the news? Are you passionate about sports and you're giving people a new look, a behind the scenes look at the news? Um, so, you know, you want to think through what problem you're going to solve for your audience. And again, these are questions that I jotted down. Um, and after I created like an elevator pitch about what my show is about, um, you know, and my show is simply about inspiring people to move forward through adversity and to hopefully help people build their dream life. So um, these were sort of the questions that I asked myself to try to uh, create that singular message that I try to get out of every single episode. So what type of host are you? Um, there's three, typically there's three types of hosts for podcasting. Um, there's an expert host where, uh, and this is very common where you're a business owner, maybe you're a health professional, uh, maybe your podcast is about diet, nutrition, and you're the expert and you share the expertise you have. Uh, if you're the interviewer, uh, this is more my style show. I have guests on and I explore the different topics. Uh, I pick their brain. I share their story. Um, you know, and I'll take, I'll take my guests, I'll interview them, and I'll share their story from beginning to end. And then there's the journalist, which is really more... Um, there's a lot of new shows that take this approach for obvious reasons. They share a story through the lens of a journalist. Um, you know, these are more shows where the host is sharing a story that happened in the past. Uh, another thing to consider that's super important is will you have a co-host? So lots to consider here. Uh, partnerships can be very difficult. Probably the most important question to ask if you're considering having a co-host is do you have a shared vision? Uh, this is really so important. If you don't, it will be incredibly challenging to work with that uh, co-host. Um, you know, and this is probably the single most important thing that you'll want to consider uh, if you're having conversations with a friend or someone who you're thinking having a co-host with. Another thing is also do your schedules line up. Um, you know, I have some friends that have started podcasts with co-hosts and they can never find time uh, to get on the podcast together, to record together. Um, so this one might sound like super obvious, but um, I do know podcasts that have fallen apart because they just could not find uh, the time and also didn't commit the same level of time to that show. So you want to make sure this person is truly complimentary to you. Um, and with any show, you want to know that the host is complimenting you, your show, and just think through what they add and bring to the table. So what's your format? Um, you know, this is another thing that you'll want to consider. Uh, you know, will you tell one story throughout a season? Will your show be standalone where at any point a listener can jump in? Um, some shows follow that season. So, you know, you can come and listen to a podcast. They're going to get eight to 12 episodes and it's all sort of about the same theme. That's season one. And then you can start, jump into season two, three, four, et cetera. Um, and other shows are more like mine where 
you know, you might just listen to one episode, never come back again. You might listen to, uh, you know, a handful of episodes that are about a specific theme you like. Um, so, you know, this is up to you. Obviously you can decide how you want your show to go. Um, most of the time, if you are sharing, um, a specific story and it's very long, like serial, it will be broken up into, um, you know, seasons and you'll have to follow each episode by episode. Um, other shows like Joe Rogan's podcast is standalone. You could listen to anyone and, uh, you know, you won't miss out anything from the previous episode. Um, just spoke about that. Uh, so do you want guests without a, without a co-host guests can really help enhance your show. Um, you know, with, if you don't have a co-host, uh, definitely having a guest will help engage your listeners, keep them engaged and listening. Um, in my show in the past, I've done both solo episodes that are pretty short. Um, but typically the ones with the guests do do better. They get more downloads because, um, you know, it mixes it up. It gets uh, another personality on the show. Um, so there are a lot of perks to having guests. The other thing that's really interesting, and we'll dive into this in a little bit from a marketing standpoint, um, guests can really help with promotion. The episodes that I've created that have the biggest downloads have always been the shows with, uh, have always been shows with, with my guests and especially guests that, you know, cooperate and um, share the episode. So, you know, normally a guest will then take the episode, share it with their network and um, it really helps in terms of growing the show and getting more listens and downloads. And the last way to shape your show is through listening and looking at what your competition is doing. There's a lot you can learn from your competition. You can use their success to figure out how you want to make your show great. You know, some things you can decide on your own um, is trying to figure out, is their frequency good? And how frequently do they drop a new episode? Um, you know, some podcasts that I listen to that are similar to mine. Um, they drop a podcast every single week. Some drop multiple episodes throughout the week. Um, so there's a lot you can learn from your competition in that regard. Um, also, what, what topics do they cover? Are their topics consistent? And how does the episode differ episode to episode? As well, what similarities are there between each episode? So in some of the podcasts that I've done, um, I really try to follow the same uh, storytelling technique throughout um, and try to keep my theme consistent in every single episode. Um, there are other podcasts that um, have a similar theme, but um, you know, maybe it's more free form or maybe it's more uh, they're trying to take the, the audience through like a very specific uh, narrative story. So there's a lot that you can learn from figuring out what your competition is doing, what you like, what you don't like, what you think their audience likes and doesn't like. Um, and then other things you can do is look at how they got their listeners. How do they market today? What makes their show special? Is it the content? Is it the host? Is it their format? So there's a lot. If you're going to start your own podcast, I highly recommend looking at, uh, you know, what your, what your competition is doing um, and see what you can learn from that. So once you establish your theme, um, it's time to publish your first episode. I guess before we jump into more of like the mechanics, um, I guess we can open it up for like a short Q and A as it relates to establishing your theme and anything we've covered thus far. Feel free to use your camera and microphones to ask questions, or if you're um, if you'd prefer, you can use the chat feed as well. But I'm assuming we're all outgoing if we're starting a podcast. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Timothy. Hey, Tim. Um, I was wondering if, can you like create a podcast to just be like, without promoting a business or anything, just be like a chill, like, like, you know, listening experience? Yeah. So absolutely. My podcast has literally zero to do with my business. Um, I don't promote my business in my podcast. It is, um, so far removed and, um, yeah, so absolutely. You know, if you wanted to start a podcast, just talking to a microphone and upload that, um, and share with the world. You can do that. If you want to have a, a friends on or guests on, um, you know, you could, you could do that. That's very, um, like I'll just use Joe Rogan as the example. I listen to his podcast all the time. Um, still sort of today, it, there are several times where he just brings on, uh, you know, a friend or someone and, you know, they talk for an incredibly long time, but, 
Um, you know, they're not necessarily talking about something in particular um, or it doesn't have to do with the business or the news or anything like that. So absolutely. All right, cool. Thank you. No problem. I have a question. What would it be the top three platform for a business to utilize um, for like a small to middle sized business to utilize for? Um, in, in terms of promoting the show? Promoting and recording. It's both. Yeah. So um, I'll get into that in a little bit, I guess, when we get into more of like the mechanics um, of how to actually record, etc. cetera. Um, we'll get into it a little bit. Once you start finding a host, um, without getting too technical, uh, a good a good hosting platform will distribute it amongst all the um, feeds. So you'll be on Apple, Google, YouTube, um, uh, Spotify, etc. So we'll we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, Danny, I have a question for you, and maybe it kind of bounces off of Timothy's that he asked, um, do you have to be solving a problem or can it just be um, a sharing of ideas or thoughts? Yeah. So I think what's, what's really neat about um, having a podcast is that there are like no rules, you know, um, if, if you want to have your uh, share your thoughts or um, it's, it's really up to you as the host to decide what you want your show to be. Um, and you know, you have to, you'll have to decide what the purpose of the show is. Is this, is, is your show going to, going to be focused around, um, you know, this is a hobby, this is a passion project. I want to sit down and share my thoughts. Um, you know, I'm just using this as an example, but, uh, of art or of sports with the world. I don't care necessarily to grow my show, to have 10,000 listens an episode, um, there then absolutely you could do exactly what you want if you are more focused around tying this maybe to a business and again my show isn't tied to a business um you know you might try to figure out hey what is the audience like etc but uh with that being said like my show is not tied to um it is not tied to my business uh i don't really try to solve a problem i'm trying to share stories to inspire people to go out there and build their dream life um which sure in some ways you could say is, is a problem, but um, you know, for the most part, since I launched, I really did try to figure out, Hey, what does my audience want to hear? Um, you know, cause of course I could, I could talk into, I could post episodes and um, let's just say I'm doing it for myself and I don't care so much about the, the result, how many people listen to it. Of course you could do that, but probably once you get started um, you'll probably try to figure out, Hey, what does, what does my audience want to hear and then start to cater your, your, your show more towards them. But um, absolutely, you know, you, you definitely don't need to solve a problem. I think a lot of really successful shows don't solve problems. They, you know, they have an interesting host that shares either a wealth of knowledge or um, interesting stories or an interesting take or perspective. Great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So if, if there's no other questions about, um, how to like think through your theme, etc., we'll jump into, uh, probably the more technical stuff, which is probably what you're all looking for anyways. Um, so, um, once, once you establish your theme, we'll get into uh, a little bit more of how to actually record, etc. Uh, so a microphone microphone is, uh, definitely not needed, but I personally highly recommend it. Um, I use a Blue Yeti microphone. Um, I put the link here and I could, I could share this after so people can, you know, access the, the, the slides as well. But um, I, I use a Blue Yeti microphone. It's, pretty po it's a pretty popular one. Um, I do recommend if you're going to be recording uh, to have a professional uh, audio setup. You don't need to be in a studio, but um, having a mic is important. Uh, you really want to, you know, this is your product. Your audio is your product. And uh, I'm sure I'm like many of you, if you try to listen to anything that's on the radio or something with bad audio, um, it's pretty annoying and you might be more likely to turn it off. Um, but I actually found more important than the microphone itself is 
the environment that I record in. Um, you know, so you want to avoid echoey rooms, like recording in an open kitchen uh, could be really bad. Recording in a bathroom could be really bad. Um, I've seen people uh, hack together, uh, you know, studios by putting a blanket over themselves and their computer and recording that way because you want to, you know, minimize the, the echo. Um, you could definitely save uh, bad audio through editing, et cetera, which we'll get into shortly. Um, but I, I do recommend, you know, a good quality mic, uh, recording in a smaller room, carpet is definitely helpful. Um, and just trying to go for the place with a crisp, clean noise. Um, I will say though, you know, don't let uh, lack of microphone or the audio deter you from starting. Uh, when I first started, it was pre-COVID and I said I wanted to record in a professional studio. Um, and I probably delayed launching my show by like a month because uh, I had to figure out how to find a studio. And then COVID happened and I said, cool, I need to keep recording. So, um, you know, I shifted to a Blue Yeti mic and honestly, it was uh, a lot easier and a lot simpler. Um, in terms of recording and editing, so um, Audacity is a super popular software. Um, it's free. It's very simple to use. If you go on YouTube, there's ton of, tons of tutorials on how to use it. Um, it's pretty similar to GarageBand. I think it's a little bit more um, old school. Um, so this is great if you're recording in person and directly on your computer. Um, you know, however, if, if you, uh, if you will be having guests, um, I don't recommend Audacity or GarageBand. It makes it a lot more complicated. You need to have, um, you need to have a different setup. You need to have two microphones, um, two sets of headphones, a splitter. So, um, especially now with COVID and people like not getting together, um, most likely if you have a guest now, um, you're going to want to use different software. Um, so I'll get into that. So how I personally choose to record, I use a software called Squadcast. Um, on that software, you're able to both um, see, see your guests and it records the audio. It does not record video today. Um, that's what I use. If you wanted to use something that's even simpler, um, Anchor is great. Anchor is a great tool. It's free. You could download it on your iPhone and you could literally start recording uh, you know, right after this. Um, you could send a link on Anchor to uh, your guest and you basically record on the same line. So Anchor is an, an incredible tool. If you want to do something that's a little bit more um, like lean, mean, fast approach. Um, however, I use Squadcast. So on Squadcast, you can go in, um, you, schedule, you schedule your time, you can record. And I actually record my solo shows also in Squadcast and then download it. Um, I find that to be much simpler than using GarageBand or Audacity. Um, but these are Squadcast, Zencaster, and Anchor um, are like three of probably the most popular tools for recording today. Um, and we can get into, uh, when we open it back up for Q&A, uh, you know, we can get into any particular questions around that software. In terms of how I edit, so um, there, there are a lot of people that... Um, will want to edit themselves. And in terms of editing yourself, um, if you do want to do that, GarageBand um, or Audacity will enable you to do that. And again, um, you can go to YouTube and watch tutorials that are probably less than 10 minutes and um, it will show you how to chop up the, the audio, um, improve the, the, the audio quality, et cetera. Um, however, from a time management standpoint, um, I, I just hire someone on Fiverr or Upwork. Um, I don't know how familiar people here are with, with either of those platforms. So we can get into that in a little bit as well. Um, but they're both freelance websites. Um, you know, Fiverr, you could find most things done for around $5. Um, I put two links here with both um, audio engineers where you can find someone. Um, I found someone on Upwork that basically edits all the audio files and I pay them on a per episode basis. Um, and I find that's a lot more efficient than me chopping up um, my own audio via Audacity. Most likely you're gonna wanna have show music, um, an intro for the intro for the outro. Uh, for me, 
uh, once again, I leaned into, uh, I did explore hiring someone on Fiverr for the show music. Um, I got an audio for like $5. My friend's a, a, a musician though. So I had him ultimately make the, the audio clip that I used today. Um, I also included a link here. Again, I'll, we can send this out after, um, you know, with um, audio technicians specifically for show music for podcasting. Um, show art, um, Fiverr or Canva are going to be your best options uh, in terms of, or any freelance site really. Um, but I would say the biggest thing that uh, I wish I knew when I was starting in terms of show art was don't overthink it. Um, I made so many copies of different artwork. Um, the artwork ultimately um, will not really change uh, the amount of listeners that you get in your show or out of your show. Um, you know, so totally up to you. You can always change it. It's not forever. Um, but Fiverr or Canva is going to be a great tool there. And then for hosting. So, um, basically you'll need to use a service to host the RSS feed and the RSS feed just basically is the place that, um, you know, your podcast will live and your hosting service, whichever partner you work with, um, that will host your podcast. Um, and the host services that are the most popular are probably Libsyn and Acast. Um, so I got, I, I have a code. Um, I use Acast. I don't use Libsyn. A lot of people like Libsyn. They both accomplish essentially the same thing. Um, Acast is a young company. Um, they are growing pretty quickly. And um, I actually found it a lot easier to use, which is why I ultimately went with them. Um, some, so going back to it in terms of working on ACAST, um, with ACAST in particular, um, once you upload your podcast, um, you basically just with the click of a button, once it's uploaded, it will go to the different uh, platforms. So it will go to iTunes, it will go to Stitcher, it will go to YouTube, um, Spotify, it will go to all the places that you want your podcast to go through just uploading. Um, so ACAST is like super easy to use um, in terms of distribution. And that's why I like them. They're, they're, they're building out more analytics tools as well, um, which is a really neat feature. And um, for anyone that doesn't have a host yet, you know, you could use the code QSPOD and you'll get six months free with them. Um, so I just covered this a little bit, but via your host, you'll be able to distribute to the different platforms. So with ACAST with one click, um, you know, you'll be able to go to all the Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Alexa, Google Play, et cetera. So, you know, really your job, once you have your, all your tools set up, um, it's your job to become the best host possible. So if it's a solo show, you might want to figure out what sort of, uh, you know, show your, your audience is looking for and how to best engage them. If you're interviewing your guests, it's your job to become the best interviewer possible. So, you know, there are, there's tons of uh, resources online in terms of uh, trying to figure out how to become a better interviewer. Um, but, you know, those were, th these are things that like, um, I definitely spent some time researching or just trying to get better at over time since I launched my show. Um, a few quick tips as it relates to being a great interviewer. Um, you know, research your guests ahead of time, read any previous articles, listen to a podcast that they've been on, learn more about them, hear some stories that they might share and figure out what questions they might not have been asked yet. Um, I personally found that sometimes if I listen to too much content, uh, from, from a guest, then when I have them on, I feel like I've heard their story so many times and, um, I'm actually like less intrigued to, um, you know, hear what they have to say now that I just listened to it on someone else's podcast several times over. So, um, sometimes I try to figure out what questions they haven't been asked yet. Um, you know, determine what you can ask them to offer your audience something special. And more than anything, I think being a great listener is key. If you are going to be interviewing people. What I typically like to do is before I have any guest on, um, I schedule a call with my, with my guest and um, I sort of walk them through what my show is about in case they haven't listened to an episode. Um, I walk them through the general flow that will take the interview. And 
uh, we go through sort of beginning to end uh, what, what the episode will be like prior to recording. In terms of the marketing, um, you know, if you're, if you're the host, typically what I would do is just promote across all my social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram. Um, there are a lot of forums on Reddit um, as well as Facebook, like um, podcasting 101 or new to podcasting, etc. cetera. Um, so you can join other communities online on Facebook, on Reddit. Um, and those are places where you can actually submit your link and say, hey, I just launched my podcast, et cetera. And that's, a, that's one way to get some initial traction. Um, more so what I did at the beginning was text everyone I knew in my network and say, hey, let's do a new episode I just dropped. But um, the, the network of communities on Facebook, Reddit, um, those have been very effective as well in terms of sharing my podcast with new people and getting new listeners. Uh, if you do have a guest, you know, you could share, uh, you could send your guests an email, arming them with all the info they need to share. Um, so after every single episode, when the episode is ready to uh, go live, um, I'll send my guest an, an email, typically the morning of, um, and I will actually give them links to um, share the podcast. I'll give them a little snippet as well, a video to, um, you know, take, take, the podcast and share it with their network and make it really easy for them to share. Um, and then in terms of listeners, um, always ask them to rate review and subscribe helps. Um, it helps from an analytic standpoint, it helps, uh, boost your show and maybe get your show in front of people that don't necessarily see it. Um, but probably even more so than that at the beginning, um, I would ask anyone who was listening to share it with a friend. Um, and that definitely helped, uh, in terms of getting, people that might not have known that I was even doing a podcast to come in and listen. So how to get great guests um, might sound pretty obvious, but I basically make a list of the people that I'm intrigued by and I send them an email, send them a message on, on Instagram, Facebook, and I simply ask them to be a guest on my show. So this is just an example of the, you know, what I would send them in some, in some regard. Um, you know, I tell them that I'm a big fan of whatever, if they're an entrepreneur, if they wrote a book. Um, and I, I sort of give them some, some compliment just to get them, you know, because I'm trying to entice them to come on my show. Um, and then I tell them, you know, that I'm the host of this podcast, we're growing, and I'd love to share their story on my podcast. And um, I try to either share that, you know, that my audience would love to hear their story. Um, if they just came out with a book or they're trying to promote something, you know, I'd say I'd, I'd love to help promote uh, your book or your product, et cetera, on my show. So um, that's typically how I would go about guest outreach. Um, there are platforms um, to find guests, um, but I found it the, the platforms have been um, much more ineffective and uh, the quality of the person that the, or the guest that, uh, a lot of the, the platforms have are uh, not necessarily like the ideal candidate candidate that I'm looking to bring on my show. Um, so I found guest outreach to be the absolute uh, most effective and uh, persistence. You know, if the person doesn't get back to me, I'll send them another email and another email until they're willing to cut to either come on or they say that, you know, this isn't a priority now, but um, I have a master list of people that I'm trying to get in touch with and, uh, just sort of contact them one by one. So in terms of monetization, um, monetizing your show is really, really challenging. Um, you need to have a substantial amount of listeners to be able to monetize. And you need to be getting about 10,000 downloads per month. Um, just to give you like a, a general, um, you know, I, an idea about my own show. Um, I launched it in February Right now, I'm around 2,000 downloads per month. Um, so it is really difficult to get to 10,000 downloads per month. Um, from what I've experienced, the more niche your show, the more easy it is to grow. Um, the shorter the show, typically. Um, I know a lot of people who have shows that are five minutes, 10 minutes long, um, because there's just so much content today. And um, you know, as we discussed at the beginning, there are so many people 
that have a podcast today that it's really hard to get people's attention. Um, but typically you really can't monetize until you start to reach 10,000 downloads per month. Um, and typically the ways to monetize are ads, live events, selling courses, products, or Patreon. And, um, we can jump into this if people have questions at the end, but Patreon's a cool platform for, um, you know, people to connect with their audience and people pay a subscription to get, uh, VIP content, et cetera. And ACAST has, um, an integration with them. So you can, uh, link the two, um, through, 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 through ACAST, but, um, monetization is really challenging. Uh, people have sent, you know, some, some people have sent some free merchandise, like to, to, uh, my house to promote, et cetera. Um, but in terms of actually getting to monetization, you need to hit us that 10,000 downloads per month. That's typically what, um, you know, companies that are looking to advertise are looking for. And then analytics. So, um, on your host platform, you'll be able to view your analytics. Um, for some of the more, um, like Apple iTunes, they have their own analytics on their backend. Um, but as you're just getting started, I'd say, don't get caught up in the analytics. Um, you know, it can, it can and likely will bog you down unless you already have, um, a big, a big influence or a big network or a big email list, etc. Um, if you are starting from scratch, it will take time. Um, and you will just need to sort of be very patient with it. Uh, the way, the way that I sort of view, um, you know, podcasting right now is that, um, it is sort of like an investment for the long term, And, um, you know, I can't imagine, do I think I'll eventually hit 10,000 downloads a month? Absolutely. But, um, in the, in the near term, I think it will be sort of this slow, um, rise. And that's sort of what I've personally experienced since I launched the show. Um, every single month has been, uh, more listeners, more listeners, et cetera, but, uh, slow and steady in terms of the metrics that you want to look for. Um, the average downloads per episode is going to be the most relevant. Um, however, uh, again, you know, if you're just starting, I would say, don't even spend time, uh, trying to look at the analytics because it, it, it really takes, uh, time to build a, a true following and, uh, to get, to get an audience that want to listen to your show. And the last bit of gold is have fun and don't stop or be discouraged that your show is not exploding with growth. Um, you know, this is something that I spoke to, uh, a mentor about for some time when I first launched. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're already a celebrity or you have a, uh, a business with a large email list and you launch a podcast, you're going to get substantial number of downloads. But if you are like me and you are just starting from scratch, um, it is going to take a lot of time. Um, you know, and I'm used to in business, like sort of experiencing more, uh, oh, we have to launch and grow very quickly and think about it very methodically. Um, in this instance, you know, really trying to think it through it more as, uh, this is something I'm deeply passionate about. I think podcasting, uh, it's just such a unique time to have a podcast, to launch a podcast and try to grow a podcast. Um, so I think, you know, having fun, um, you know, is, is, is probably the, the biggest piece of advice. If, if there is an opportunity for you to monetize, uh, you know, now or down the road, um, you know, that's awesome. But, um, I think right now, some of the best podcasts are the ones that are, have started because, um, you know, there were people who just wanted to share a story, a mission, um, or something interesting. Um, so we can, we can open it up to, um, any questions in particular, if there are specific questions around, um, like a cast or, um, hosting or analytics or anything like that. Um, I could also pull open any of those, uh, sites. Um, just to try to show you like the back end, et cetera, as well, if that might be helpful. And Ania, did we answer all of your questions about the um, tech and, and the more specific tech questions that you had earlier? Um, yes, thank you. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. I appreciate it. 
Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with any of those, so we'll have to just sort of poke around. Um, but we're trying to figure out we're going to use Zoom somehow, and they have ability to record. So, um, so if if you want um, Zoom, Zoom obviously works well too. I personally never used it just because um, I always found that when I tried to record on there at the beginning, um, I had like I had issues either um, with the audio. Um, with the audio files getting messed up. Um, I could just pull open um, and share my screen just to show you like how simple it is on Squadcast, but there's so many platforms to record. Um, so, you know, I would say um, you do have, you should probably like dig around and try to figure out which one, um, you know, works best for what you're looking to do. Um, I'll I mean, just... mine is a business focus, right? So that my audience are would be head of HR, CFO is a specific, right? It's it's not a it's a professional, not a personal podcast. So yeah, so matters um, in terms of what type of audience would use. How do they, you know, download post podcast? Yeah, do you, um, for you, is it important to capture video as well? Not really. That would be almost an optional. I think most of them we would want to be able to do it when it's not a video, so someone can you know take take a jog and listen. There's not a lot of business podcasts that it's not a webinar. A lot of the competitors, what they do, it's really they do a webinar type, and people don't have time, so they're over sitting in front of a computer for another thirty an hour to listen to content. So we would want to do it more on an audio version, but have the ability to invite guests sometimes for their face. Uh, you know visual got it um that makes complete sense so you know if if you check out squadcast um it's really simple to use you would just simply like add a session you could make a title you can schedule it um you could you would input your guest email if you're having a guest um just to show you yeah, and, and anyone, it would be a guest. So, and a guest would usually, it would almost never be, there would be another state. So it would be no one that would be next to me ever really. And it wouldn't be, you know, just me talking. It always, there would be a, a guest or two sometime. Yeah, so um, so basically you would just copy the invite link and you could send that to your guest and then you'd be able to join, uh, you know, at the time of your um, scheduled interview or scheduled podcast. You would simply join join it. I don't know how this will work for in a, a, zoom, a zoom right now, but um, you know you would uh, so um, you would be able to see. This is just your settings, how your microphone is, etc. Um, you would join you would join the session, and if you had a guest, it, this would go split screen, so you'd be able to see your guests, and you would hit record, um, and you guys would start recording. What I love about this software in particular is that it records, um, it records your files in, in, um, it doesn't record on all, one audio file link. And, um, that's the problem with, um, some of the other software. Um, I'll just show you. So when you're done recording, um, when you're done recording, you get two audio files, you get your audio file and your guest audio file. So when you go to edit it, um, you can edit your audio and you can edit your guest audio. Sometimes if there's some software where it only records one audio file. So if there's any issues at all, um, let's say the guest mic stops, uh, you, so you need to edit the, it's very, it's much more challenging to edit the, um, I'll just here, this will probably make the most sense. So here I get two audio files, my audio file and my guest audio file. So if there's issues with my guest's audio, I can edit her audio. And if there's issues with mine, I can edit mine. Some software only records one audio file for the for both of you. And it makes it a lot more challenging to, to edit the file. Thank you. And no what is, is this is the this, uh, what is the cost of this platform or how does it work? Is it per episode or do you? Um, yeah. So I, I, I pay based on usage. Um, I'm pretty sure there's like a light version. That's maybe $20. I think I pay around 40, $40 a month. Thank you. No, no problem. Um, 
I could also, I didn't put it because I thought it would be easier to just, to just show, but um, if there's interest, I could open up ACAST as well, just to show what that would look like in terms of uploading an episode. Would that be helpful or that'd be helpful? Okay. Um, and, and again, you know, um, I, I do recommend looking into Libsyn. Um, I, I use ACAST, but you can explore the different tools and figure out what works best for you. Um, so this is the back end of ACAST once you're logged in. Everyone can see my screen, right? Okay, so um, if you were to make a new episode, um, you would take your edited audio software and drag it right to the audio file, simply drag and drop. You would make your, your audio title. Um, you, can, you can make a subtitle. Um, I personally don't. Uh, they will auto-populate a link. If you want to make a specific link, you could do that. If you have a season, you would put like season two. You would put your episode number. And then, um, you know, they, they have you select the type of content. So full, um, that's typically what I'm going for. At the beginning, I have one trailer, so that was a shorter one. Uh, you could do bonus. And then this is your summary. This is what will ultimately get loaded to be the description of your episode. Um, and then you could schedule your publish date. So, you know, I want to upload this, and it's going to go live on Saturday. Um, and it, it's really as simple as that. You would, you would upload your art right here, um, and that's it. And then it would queue up basically um, – it would queue up in your my episodes part. In terms of distribution, just because I spoke about that before, um, these are all the places that ACAST uh, distributes to. Um, iTunes is not on here. Uh, sorry, Apple is right here. So these are all the places that they distribute to. Um, so super like straightforward in terms of um, once you're set up, you would select where you want it to distribute to. I would personally recommend you distribute to everywhere. Um, and, uh, you know, once you publish, once it's published, it goes live and that's it. So they have, um, here, so you, you could, you could see basically once you make these selections, um, once you publish, it would just go live and you'd be sharing you'd, your episode would automatically go there. And is the cost of that different than, um, the other software? Yeah. So, um, this one, um, I don't even remember what I'm not even certain what I'm paying now. Let's see if they have here. Um, so you can, you can start with like their basic, which is free. Um, here it's 14 99 a month. So it's not really too expensive. That will enable you to distribute to Amazon, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube. Um, and what I, with, with the, code that I had sent, um, you, you guys will get six months, um, you guys will get six months free. Let me get that code once more though. I can post it in the, uh, okay. You. So that's, that's what I, that's what I use. That's sort of like my stack and, um, you know, obviously totally up to you if you want to, um, if, if you'd like to have, uh, if you want to edit it versus uh, have someone else edit it. Actually, I cannot post it in the chat. Sorry. I'm okay, not I'll, I'll do that slide right now. Sorry. And who was your favorite guest that you had on your show? Um, so, um, <laughs> Jewel, Jewel the Bee was someone that I had and, um, she was probably the biggest character that I had on. Um, she's like an influencer in the food kitchen space and just had like a fascinating story. Um, uh, it's really tough. I mean, that's what I like about podcasting. You, you meet with all these people who have such interesting stories. Um, she was probably the one that surprised me the most just in terms of her journey and uh, the life that she's building now. I just thought her story was pretty fascinating. I did really love my first one um, with uh, a friend, Sunil Aurora. Um, 
He's actually coming back on uh, next week, and um, it'll be interesting because uh, the show has evolved greatly since uh, since that first episode. But I just like a lot of the topics that that we covered together. Thank you. No problem. Jenny, are there any other analytics that people should be tracking besides, um, you know, episode or uh, subscribers a month? Um, so, you know, you might want to look at your, your downloads per episode, um, especially if you're experimenting with the type of content. So, um, you know, if you're doing, uh, for example, in, in mine for a while, I was doing three episodes a week. I was doing an interview, a recap of the interview, and then um, sort of a short form, uh, like uh, a short form um, take on just something that I might have been feeling. And I was posting that every Friday. And when I was doing that, I was looking for uh, downloads, listens, and um, to try to see what sort of content my audience listened to. Um, by far, definitely the most um, the ones that got the most listens were always the ones with guests. Um, just, I see the question. So the average length, so the, the average length uh, prior to COVID for the most popular um, were podcasts that were less than 10 minutes long. Um, even podcasts that were as short as five minutes. Um, again, that's just because there's so much content today. It's really hard to get people's attention. Um, but I think in terms of, um, what's a good average length for your show. It really depends on the type of show. And again, what your audience wants to hear. And that might be something you want to experiment with. You know, you can, you could start with a 20 minute show, see how many downloads you get, do that a few times and then change it to be shorter and see sort of what, what happens there. But um, I'd say typically less than 30 minutes is an ideal, um, an ideal length just because of the amount of content if you are doing like a more interview style show, um, it might be challenging. Uh, you know, my, my episodes, um, to date, they've been on average around like 45 minutes and I'm trying to even get it to closer to 30 minutes just because, um, you know, people, people are busy, but, um, and then also in terms of down, um, dropping, dropping episodes. So, um, I would post a new episode every single Monday. Um, Sunday night, I would, I would, uh, upload Sunday, I would upload it and Monday morning it would go live. A lot of podcasts, uh, are on that schedule. Um, and that's what I found worked best for me. Um, there are some people that I know that are dropping and, uh, three episodes a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Um, so you need to figure out sort of what works, what works for you in terms of when to actually release the episode. Any other questions for Danny while we have him on the call? Oh. I, have, I have one more quick question. Yeah. Um, is there a, like a licensing kind of thing that you have to worry about? Like, let's say I decide to do a podcast about me and my life. And it's like ob observations from a middle-aged mom. Um, like, it, can anybody come back and say, hey, I'm already doing that show. Knock it off. No. So not, not that I'm aware of. I mean, um, I don't think so. I mean, there are, if, if you go to like, uh, even the sports shows, just to be very specific, there are so many shows that cover the exact same, uh, you know, topic, um, the exact same conversation, etc. Um, so no, like I, I, I would say you wouldn't have to worry from like a licensing standpoint. I think that's, what's really cool about a podcast. Like anyone can start it. Um, the barrier to entry is so low, uh, the ease in terms of setting one up and creating one is so easy. And I think, um, yeah, like it's, it's, like I said at the beginning, there are really, um, podcasting is still so young and so new that there really aren't like rules right now. It's sort of like, a, um, you know, the wild, wild west where you can really decide what you want your show to be, um, what you want it to be about, etc. Thank you. No problem.
Oh, and a question came through in the chat feed, uh, Danny. Have you used transitional music using known artists? And if so, are there issues around sampling that you've encountered? So I haven't, I haven't used any audio that um, I had. Um, I had my friend who was, who's a musician, like make the audio that I've used. Um, in terms of getting transitional music, um, you, you should get music that, um, you know, is either bought that becomes yours or that's licensed. Um, you know, you can Google like, um, transitional podcast music and you'll probably see a bunch of companies that are selling, um, music clips that are, uh, you know, a couple dollars, um, Fiverr as well. I'm really big on leaning into the freelance sites to find, uh, you know, freelancers that will make amazing, amazing music. So, um, I, I would definitely recommend, um, getting uh, either a licensed tune or getting your own uh, music built. Um, I personally haven't heard of any podcasters running into issues, but um, there's a lot of platforms that are selling music. So um, I assume it's, you know, to prevent any sort of like legal issues with stealing a musician's uh, music. Great. Any last questions? Well, I want to thank um, Danny for being with us today and for sharing all of your knowledge. I just linked to um, Danny's podcast in the chat for you, but if you haven't had a chance to check it out, definitely. It's a great listen, uh, Bits of Gold, which is the name of his podcast. And thank you all for being with us today. And we're really excited to have your podcast once you get them up and running as well. Good luck to all of you. Thank you.